Hello everybody, we're live on Facebook and Instagram again. So if you like this setup, let me know. I'm trying to get some uh, some cross cross platform going on. Today I'm going to talk about, so I just had a call with so somebody that I think I'm going to work with. We, we look like we're a really good fit. So I just had a call with her. And it made me really, really think this call. Because I work with a lot of people with like SIBO, Candida, gut problems, these thing, these kinds of things. This lady's the first person that I'm considering use of an antimicrobial in, in our approach. And that might shock you, like, oh, you work with SIBO and Candida and these types of overgrowths and you don't use antimicrobials. What? what? Why? Why don't you use antimicrobials? And it's, it's fascinating. It's really fascinating. And that's what I want to tell you about today. And I'm going to tell you about why this approach, that, that's sort of mainstream, that's like, take the antibiotics, take the antifungals, take the antimicrobial herbs, oregano, grapeseed oil, all these different things. Why this doesn't work? This is, this is an old model. It's flawed. It's approaching SIBO and Candida as if they are the root cause of a problem. And they're not. They're a symptom. That it's, it, it's a sign that something else is going wrong. And I'll give you, a, give you a, a little hint. One of these things that's going wrong is going to be one of the five pillars. So stomach acid, uh, bile, digestive enzymes, motility, and mucosa. It's going to be one of these things. So this is why we don't usually use this. But let me get into it. The gut has natural cleansing mechanisms. It, it, cleans, it cleans itself, it cleanses itself all of the time. And we know this because if you take a healthy person and say you give them four glasses of kefir, they're going to be fine. They've probably just ingested like five trillion or an, 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 a ridiculous amount of organisms. More than you're ever going to find like in a probiotic or like it's going to be the highest you're ever really going to find. It's like eating a whole bottle of probiotic powder. And they eat this all at once. And they don't get an overgrowth. They don't get SIBO. Why is that? Why do they not get SIBO? It's because the body's natural cleansing mechanisms are intact. The digestive system is functioning properly. So we're going to go over the five pillars because we I, I condense this down into the five pillars because it makes it super, super, super easy to understand because these are the five primary things. If you've got some kind of gut problem, SIBO, Candida, what, whatever it is, it's probably one of these five things. I would say, in fact, every single person that I've worked with, it's been one of these five things. So 100% success rate so far. Stomach acid. Stomach acid, not only does it digest our food, it dissolves everything and turns it into a liquid. Everything that's in the small intestine should be completely liquid by that point. So stomach acid does that. It also activates pepsin, which is the enzyme that we use to digest protein. So don't have enough stomach acid, it means you're not gonna digest your food, which is bad, because then you've got weak immunity and you're not digesting anything. But more than that, your stomach acid is your first barrier. It's what protects you against, it kills so many organisms. Like I said, the person that drinks four glasses of kefir, they've probably killed 80% of the bugs that are in that already in the stomach. So massive line of defense. Secondly, we go on to enzymes. Enzymes are, so an enzyme's a catalyst, it just means it speeds up a reaction. So if you've got food that you're trying to digest and it's not digesting properly because it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not digesting quick enough because we don't have enough enzymes, it just sits around in the small intestine. What happens if it's sitting around in the small intestine? It's fermenting, it's causing overgrowth, and then you're getting SIBO and things as a result. So you can see it's not really the issue. The issue is the enzymes aren't there. Um, then we move on to bile. The bile pillar is my favorite. When I did the five pillars course, um, each class is about 20 to 30 minutes long. And then the bio, the one about bile is like 50 minutes long because I'm, I'm just going on and on and on about it because it's so important. Bile is how the body gets rid of toxins. All fat soluble toxins are excreted in the bile. So you don't have healthy bile, you're not detoxing. Super, super important. But more than that, bile, you can think of bile like soap. So wh what do we use soap for? outside of the body. We, for the most part, we use it to wash things. We use it to get grease off of things. So if you've got dirty dishes that have got grease on, we clean them off of that. Or if you've got grease on your hands, you wash it off with soap. But we also use it to get bacteria and viruses and things that make us sick off of our hands. And the same thing is true in the gut. If the bile isn't flowing properly, first of all, you're not gonna be able to emulsify and therefore digest and absorb. You don't, you now don't have this this like soap that's, that scrubs your intestines clean. It's just not there. So. Everything's free to overgrow, nothing's stopping it. Then we move on to motility. Motility isn't just, I put food in and I poop it out. It's not as simple as that. You put food in, it comes to the stomach. It has to get turned into liquid. If it doesn't get turned to liquid or the stomach acid isn't strong enough, you get gastroparesis. So it just gets stuck in the stomach and then that's it, it's stuck until the acid can break it down enough. 
but then it finally moves into the small intestine and it doesn't just get wiggled, like it does this kind of thing, this kind of motion. But it doesn't just wiggle it one way, it doesn't just wiggle it all the way to your butt, it wiggles it this way and that, and then it like it sloshes it around all the way inside your intestines. You're getting more surface area so that you can you can digest everything. You're getting you're enhancing the absorption of the nutrients. So it's really important for that reason. But also, if it's too fast, you've got diarrhea. Nothing. You're not absorbing anything. If you do it too slow, all that bile, the toxins and stuff that are coming out, they're staying they're staying in the gut, and you're auto intoxicating yourself. So you, you you're getting stuck for that reason as well. So you need to make sure that it's it, it's balanced. It's not about like make it faster or make it slow. It's like make it where it should be, get it right. And then finally, we've got the mucosa. Mucosa, another fascinating pillar. The mucosa is what protects your gut from everything that's inside your digestive system, all of the bacteria, all of the endotoxins. Say you eat fiber, which is really rough and abrasive, or other kinds of anything that could irritate the gut. Anything, absolutely anything. I can remember once I... So I had like a jar with protein powder in it and it was glass and it had a clip top and the clip top smashed on it and it cracked the jar and there was glass in my protein powder and I was eating glass. And I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll be honest, at that point, um, that didn't even cause me as much pain as eating some foods that I was sensitive to. So eating glass was actually less painful for me than eating foods that I was sensitive to. But what I'm saying is the mucosa is what protects you from these things. It's this like jelly layer that protects everything. But more than that, it's the home for your organisms. It's the home for your beneficial bacteria. If the, the mucosa is off, the bacteria are always going to be off with it. And there's such a complex interplay between these two things. So the, the mucosa is the house for these organisms, but these organisms are also what repair this structure. They repair the house. They orchestrate how this is repaired. So if you don't have the right organisms, the mucosa is never going to be able to heal. And then when you've got decreased mucosal function, you've got inc increased permeability, which is basically known as leaky gut. Then you've got like autoimmunity, you've got depression, you've got skin problems. All of these different issues come out of having a leaky gut. So it's really important that we focus on all of these things. And then if at this point, if we get to this point and overgrowth is still a problem, that's when we use antimicrobial herbs or things like that. To be honest, I'm still not even a fan. In most in most situations, I'll always go for bioresonance. Bioresonance tells us what's wrong with the body. We don't have to interpret tests. We don't have to do anything. It's just like, it tells us what's wrong and, and we work with it. If you want more information about that, I have another bioresonance video, so go and check that out. It's quite in depth. This, this lady that I was speaking with, she's worked with a, a naturopath in the past. They put, they did the standard thing, which is put her on antimicrobial, so oregano oil, eliminate FODMAPs, so low FODMAP diet. After the kill phase, followed it up with a probiotic. The thing about this probiotic is it's non-colonizing. It was a soil-based organism. So this is like Bacillus subtilis. Um, other examples are any kind of Bacillus species are soil-based or something like Saccharomyces boulardii. These aren't colonizing. They're not gonna put that beneficial flora back in your gut, which is what, remember, we were just talking about the mucosa. You need that right flora there. And, these are things like lactobacillus and bifidobacterium and the whole broad spectrum of other organisms that we get by doing like home fermented food. But that's not the approach that people use now. It's just like take your antimicrobial, then take this non-colonizing probiotic and you'll be fine. And once she was doing the killing phase, bloating was down. But because we didn't recolonize, we didn't support these five pillars through the process. Like I, I just had a one-to-one -one call with her. I do this one-to-one -one call with everybody. So if you need help figuring out which one of your pillar is, pillars is struggling, just send me a DM and we'll get it sorted out. Basically, she's got like two, maybe three pillars are, are struggling. We have to strengthen those before we do antimicrobials again, otherwise it's completely pointless. So instead, this approach is gonna look something more like making sure that we support all of these pillars at the same time. And then we're using antimicrobial temporarily, not in the long term, not like, like I'm talking like maybe a week, two weeks, because at the minute, we're kind of outsourcing the job of the five pillars. Look, the five pillars keep the gut clean and we need to bring them back online as a priority. That's the only way you get on top of these things. And this is why people relapse so many times because they don't do this. So we use this temporarily to do the killing function of the five pillars. We do that while we bring it back online. So it, it's, it's temporary. And then once we've reduced this, this enormous overgrowth, so I told you she had um, hydrogen levels on a, on a SIBO breath test over 160, which is absolutely like, like, even if someone comes to me with like positive tests and they're like 40, 50 range, I'm like, it's probably not overgrowth, it's probably just imbalance. We can probably just support the five pillars and it will sort itself out. But up at 160, I was like, okay, fine. Like, the bloating must be bad and it's really uncomfortable. 
And she's used it before and it got rid of the bloating really well. So I know that works. So that's why I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll do this. We'll go with it. So we go with it, but then we need to, and, and this is this is another, another way that I work differently, is instead of doing a kill phase and then following it up with probiotics, we do them both at the same time because it, it, it just doesn't make sense. You need the right bacteria in there to heal the gut. You need the right bacteria in there to clear the stomach out of pathogenic organisms so it can produce stomach acid again. Probiotics, they're essential. If you, if you get like a, a, a mouse and you take its microbiome away, you sterilize its microbiome, it dies. It's like you need those healthy bugs in your gut. So we do this, this approach at the same time. Antimicrobials is very short because, and again, this is another, another thing people don't get. You hear probiotics and SIBO and you think, oh, that's really bad. You just put in more bacteria in, it's, it's gonna go badly. But we need to put them in strategically at the right time, in the right dose, while supporting the five pillars, because these are the things that keep it in balance. But the thing about probiotics is they're living and they fight with other organisms. They produce different types of antibiotic and antimicrobial and antifungal compounds. Hydrogen peroxide, like there's an enormous list. I don't need, you don't need to know what they are. You just need to know that probiotics are antibiotic. And the best part about it is they're living. They're imbued with nature's essence. So they're smart. They don't, it's not, like when you take oil of oregano, it's one substance, it's, it's like thymol and carbacol, they're the two primary active ingredients in oregano oil. That's it, you've got a dead substance that you're putting in the body, sure it's gonna kill some stuff, but when you put probiotics in, probiotics are alive. They're going to create specific antibiotic compounds that target the dysbiotic flora that you have in your gut. So it's so much more complex than you could, than you could really ever fathom. And this is the reason that doctors, naturopaths, even most like coaches like me, they use this approach because it's the intricacy of it is so overwhelming and it's very difficult to understand from a holistic perspective and really getting it. So that like, that, first of all, that's why I designed the five pillars course. So you can go through and understand each pillar, how to support it. If you're interested in the five pillars, reach out to me and I'll, I'll get you hooked up with that so you can take a look at it. But more than that, it's everybody's individual and they've got their own individualized approach, but our physiology is all the same. We well, hope if unless you've had like your gallbladder removed and things like that, then it's like, okay, we do need to do some more personalized stuff. But everybody has a stomach. Everybody has a, uh, the pancreas and a liver and a gallbladder and they all have these same physiological functions. So we just eat a physiologically appropriate diet, support the five pillars, which are again, the physiological mechanisms that the body uses to keep itself healthy, cleanses itself, digests food, just support the body to do what it's already trying to do and results just they're just effortless. You don't have to do like crazy protocols and it's, it's really, it's, it's simple, but it's complex. You just have to look at it from a different perspective. Really what I wanted to say is this is the first time since I began coaching. So like six months plus that I've even considered the use of an antimicrobial in a, like a SIBO candida kind of case. It really makes you think is just killing it the right approach or do we need to do something that's more integrative, more holistic, actually addresses the root of the problem? Because again, like I said, candida and SIBO are always the symptoms. I've never seen a case where they're actually the root cause. They're always a symptom. There's something going on higher upstream. If you don't figure out what well, this thing is up here, you can treat with antibiotics, antimicrobials, it's gonna come back. And this is, you see, if, if you're in any like gut health groups, you'll see people like, oh no, I'm on my third course of Rifaximin and it's failed. Oh no, I've been doing oregano oil for, six, 12, 18 months and I'm still getting nowhere. And it's like, you haven't like unlocked the body's essence. You haven't put its capacity to function back online. It's like, we focus there and support the body to do that. And then we get results. So if you need help with that, I do that one-to-one. -one. I was just telling you about a client. I just, well, not a client yet officially, but I'm very hopeful that we're gonna work together. I think it's gonna be a really good relationship. So if you need help with that, like I said, I do one-to-one -one calls, got the Health Potion Academy, so you can look at the Five Pillars course. I really care, I wanna get you feeling better because I know I've had these gut problems and yeah, pretty bad. It really affects your whole life. So if you need my, if you need my help, honestly, just reach out. It'd be my pleasure to help you. I really hope you found that helpful and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.